Parks. Jin Parks. Jin pa the Asian woman's expression reads open for business, but her demeanor reads dealer rather than companion. She has a jack on her neck, a gun on her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like, you, look like you know your way around. Need something? Weapons? Matrix tech? Show me what you got. Oh, she's okay, she sells guns. Now, there's quite a few different weapons you can get. And now, see, there's like different categories, weapons, drones, consumables, and you can you can narrow it down to specific categories. Pulse. And like I said, there's the basic weapon types. Pistol, shotgun, submachine gun, rifles. And there's different types of each that vary in damage, uh, range. Some of them also have different abilities. Like, some rifles have full auto, some don't. You can get a machete or a baseball bat. On critical hits, like blade weapons, though, they do AP damage as well as hit point damage. Any new drones? Smoker. A sport drone that is equipped to, to lay a smoke trail anywhere you need it most. I'd rather just shoot. I'd rather just shoot people, frankly. Plus, uh, considering the air quality around here, I'm not sure anyone would really even notice. I don't know what Wyvern's Tooth is. Some sort of liquor, there's liquor ba brand or something. Oh, it's, there's like a. I didn't really notice that. There's a stage. So they have live shows here. Some sort of hologram. Oh, check out Mr. Clu Mr. Clue. Basically, their bouncer is Satan. <laughs> except, he's except he's actually a very nice guy. Posted at the doorways to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good genes or expensive aftermarket cosmetic work, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a lantern jaw. Welcome. Please behave yourself. I wonder if, like, trolls ever have, like, ivory dealers going after them. The most dangerous game. Do you think their horns grow? Uh, yeah, I don't know if they're born with them or, they, or if they grow out. And I, I, I don't know the troll life cycle well enough to answer that, I'm afraid. <laughs> or do you mean, like, grow continuously? Yeah. Oh, I don't, yeah, may, may, maybe it's like a rat's teeth where they continue growing and they have to gnaw on stuff so they don't get too big. Oh, they'd have to rub their horns against them. Cut off. <laughs> or, or gore people. <laughs> Please behave here. Will do. You get in trouble here often? One of your other choices funny place for the architect to put a wall. <laughs> Nothing a stern look usually can't usually solve. You have business here? I was a friend of Sam Watts. Know him? Sure, everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose a part of the family. There's a sharpness in Chloe's eyes. The look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdom at a young age. You ever have to toss Sam out on his ass? Not so much toss as nudge on his way. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't a violent one. Usually, right about the night he died. He was a bit agitated. Didn't catch the specifics. Might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to show him out, but I had to deal with a couple of rival go-gangers posturing for one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out instead. Appreciate you talking with me. Happy to help. Yeah, he's a very friendly and surprisingly urbane giant troll. Okay, now this is kind of it's kind of weird. Okay, notice like okay here there's a stripper lady, Nick, and she's yeah. you know cavorting sensuously. But then there's another. Then there's there's this guy. This guy who's just like he looks so he just doesn't care. He look at him. He's. I, I, I'm not a connoisseur of male strippers, may, but it's like, he's just, uh, like, just awkwardly <laughs> waving his hand. <laughs> it must be like his first night or something. <laughs> also, he's like fully dressed for practice. There's more people. There's some large. Johnny Clean. <laughs> it sounds like either like an advertising mascot or a mobster. The man is dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overalls. He's tall, rail-thin, and has a cunning look in his eyes that says he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy, name's Johnny Clean. You new? Yeah, first time. Just getting a look at the place. Well, enjoy yourself. Looks like it's your type of place. I'm just sweeping up a bit. That's a guy named Noog. Whoa! 
Holy shit. Covered in glowing magical talismans and fetishes, the troll does not seem fully of this world. <laughs> you think? He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once, but with entities you can neither see nor hear. Mutter. I told you, it's not like that at all. Mutter. Bring me proof and you shall have it. Mutter. I am honored, your majesty. Mutter. That was why I said to use mustard instead of ketchup. But forgive me, Jean. I was a fool. Oh, he's talking to Jean Grey. <laughs> Jean! Well, maybe he's seeing the new X-Men movie. Oh, yeah, that's that's what this... That came out, like, yesterday? Yeah. He, he looks you in in the eye. His other conversation on... He, the conversation on hold. You may per peruse my magical wares and see their glory. Yeah, let's have a look. I don't have it. I'll show you. Again, there's different things. Consumables. Like, you can summon elementals to fight on your side. Uh, and then there's, okay, there's weapons, there's power bolts, which is like a, a mage, it's like, I mean, it's, it doesn't count as a spell, like, you can just use it as a weapon the same way you would use a, a machete or a gun, but it's like the standard mage weapon, basically, mage, standard mage offense. Then there's spells, mages use these, heal, wound, mana ball is an area of effect attack, armor, distraction, weaken armor, and then conjuring, which are shaman powers, <coughs> haste, slow, <coughs> Mage powers are a variety of different stuff. Shaman powers seem to be mostly focused around, like, I guess you'd call, like, buffs. Or debuffs. Like, you know, haste makes gives you more AP. Slow takes away some of theirs. Although, although the, the spell, magic mage spells, they have a lot, some of that, too. Conjuring, at least in this game, isn't nearly as useful as, uh, mage powers, I have to say. If you're interested in being a magic guy in this game, much better to go with willpower than with charisma. Although charisma is good for spirits. And then chi casting. This is for physical adepts. Manifest. A powerful magical punch that ignores armor. Killing hands. Passive. Oh, also, um, a lot of uh, mana uh, adept powers. When you have them equipped, they have one effect, like, just being, just being equipped. And then when you activate them, they gain more effect. So they have, like, a passive bonus even when you're not using them. Like, see, killing hands. Passive. Unarmored damage increased by four. Active. Unarmed damage increased by a further six for four rounds. Magic resistance one. Passive. The adept gains a light cover bonus to magic spells. So yeah, like I said, the, being a physical adept, it's like magic, but it's not so much about like you know blasting fireballs or whatever at people. It's more like you use the magic on your. It's like in your own body to like just be like you know superhumanly fast and tough and strong. Like, if you want to be Jet Li from the One or something, you'd be a physical enemy. You are nobody's bitch. They are yours. yours. Alright. Mrs. Kabuta. Kabuta. Mrs. Kabuta watches you across the room, sizing you up as you approach. She's of mixed race, Af African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house. We'll mess with it at your peril. But her eyes twinkle with a p playful light when she speaks. Kobanwa, good evening. Are you enjoying the seamstress union? There should be plenty for a man like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely. Or is this business? Tempted to ask what's upstairs. Oh, they got one of those little velvet bank ropes blocking it off. I need a moment your of your time. Your bank has velvet ropes? What's that? Your bank has velvet ropes? Well, they're, not, I, they're probably not actual velvet. They, they, look, they look like it at a distance. I mean, they probably feel like carpet or something. <laughs> I just need a moment of your time, Mrs. Kabuta. I have a thing... I have topics to discuss. Soka, why should I help you? Sam Watts. I'm looking for his killer. Ah! So, she, her, eyes, her face brightens, amused. Ah, so, you were the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel who would strike back for him from beyond the grave. What do you want to know? How well did you know Sam? I, I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here. Whenever he could beg or borrow enough Nuyen to become altered in some way. Drugs, chips, alcohol. It didn't matter to Sam. As long as he was bent, as long as he, was bent he was always looking for his next fix. Since they keep mentioning it, I just explain chips. They're, 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 called better than, they're called better than life chips. They're these electronic devices you can use to basically have like virtual re like They're like these cheap virtual reality devices. Mm. So you can use them to have like hallucinations of, you know, you know, whatever you want, basically. But they're really, they're bad for your brain. 
Okay, I'm guessing they're not permanent since you can't reuse them. No, you know, yeah, no, they get used up. You gotta buy more. And like I said, repeated use is, is bad for your nervous system. So like long time, like heavy chip users eventually become, you know, you know, not un not unlike you know, like junkies or whatever, basically. Right. He clung to this place like it was his lifeline, and we treated him as part of the family, even if none of us truly liked him, except Coyote. See Sam? Did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated, as he often was. Coyote was working bar that night and was informed, and and she informed me that. Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Cluway, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw of either of them. Why is this place called the Seamstresses Union? During the gold rush years, there was a census, and the politicians wanted as high a number as possible to gain power and revenue. To bolster their numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there were many, to the rolls. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupation, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it the Seamstresses Union, so potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly here. And thus, a rich tradition was born. A, a rich tradition of whoring. So you're a former seamstress. No. Perhaps when we know more about each other, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. She actually does have... She has an interesting backstory, actually. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? Her face darkens. Would that I could. I have not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman, and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. If she's dangerous, why fear for her? If she's smart, why fear for her? If she's dangerous, why fear for her? Please, if you are what I think you are, you know. There's always someone more dangerous. Her room is upstairs. If you're looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now and cannot be reached on her calm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have inaction on my conscience. Here's the key. All right. That, vel that velvet rope will no longer bar me. So are you able to go back downstairs? Yeah. If if you're going to like if you're moving from a place to like you know another one that like you can't go back from it'll say you know this, you're about to enter a new area. Let's see. Oh, a con console. Let's see. There's a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's set to require a password for entry. Decking. Oh, I have decking two. Hack the panel. I'm going to repay Miss Kabuda's hospitality by looting her establishment. Oh, it's well, it's certainly nicer than the place I lived. Well, I don't know if people live in that room. I can examine the teddy bear for some reason. The stuffed bear seems to be hiding something. Yeah. Make him talk! Item, nitro. Strength and willpower plus two. No? All right. So, also, you, you know, you have your inventory. Your inventory is limited to six items, but you also have a stash. Where you can store extra stuff. And luckily, if you're out somewhere and your inventory is full and you find something, you can send it to your stash automatically. Or, alternately, you can send a current item in an inventory to your stash and, ki and, ki and keep the new one with you. Which, so you don't have that problem of, you know, you're finding stuff and you can't carry it all. At least it doesn't mess with your inventory. Send this item to your stash. It's kind of disappointing. Ever, ever since I played this through this game the first time, I had no hacking skills. I've been wondering ever since what was in there. That's kind of a letdown. Alright, there's two, at least two doors we can enter. 